I have very little code at home. In this episode of Daily Dose, we'll be solving an Accenture coding interview question. And the name of the question is the two rice problem. So in this problem, we'll have two rices and let us say we are rolling them. There are totally 36 possibilities as we know. It starts from 1, 1, 1, 2 and it goes all the way up to 6, 6. So in these 36 possibilities, we have to count these pairs which add up to a given sum. So we are given an integer sum, let us say in this case 10 as input. So with this integer sum, we have to pick all those pairs which add up to the given sum. So we'll first, you know, solve the sample input, find the logic to solve this problem and then go to the coding part. So out of the 36 pairs, which pairs add up to the given sum? These pairs are 4, 6, 5, 5 and 6, 4, the inverse of the first one. So these pairs add up to 10 of course. So 4 plus 6 is 10, 5 plus 5 is 10 and 6 plus 4 is 10. So these pairs add up to 10 and hence these are the three numbers or these three pairs. So what we have to do? We have to return the count of the total number of pairs and hence these three pairs would result with the return type of a return value of 3. And along with it, what we have to do? We have to print these pairs as well if they existed. So in this case, sum is equal to 10 and hence these pairs exist. So we are printing them as well as returning the value of 3 that is the count. But if let us say we have a sum 100, this sum 100 is not at all possible because the maximum value in die 1 is 6 and that is the same case with die 2. So when we add these two 6, we will get 12 and not 100. So the sum that is greater than 12 is of course not possible. So we have to return minus 1 as the count and not print any values because that doesn't exist any. So this is the sample input, we have solved it and what is the logic that we are going to use? The obvious brute force application would involve two for loops. One for loop, you know, you know, giving the value for each type. So die 1 value would be represented by for loop 1 and let us say die 2 value is represented by for loop 2. Each would be having from i is equal to 1 all the way up to i is equal to 6. So all the 36 outcomes right from 1 comma 1 all the way up to 6 comma 6 would be tried out and which of the values would add up to the given sum in this case 10 would have been added to the count and it would have been printed. So in this way we will be you know checking each and every possibility right from 1 comma 1 and all the way up to 6 comma 6 so the 36 possibilities will be checked and uh, it will be added to the count value. But this is a really you know tedious approach and it tries each and every possibility. But we have a much efficient approach that involves just a single for loop. So let us see what that approach is. So here we are in the compiler. We have two functions. The main function as well as the count pairs of function. So this main function contains the input that we have and the function calls. So the input is in sum is equal to 6 as we saw and okay we saw 10. Either way we have 6 and then the count pairs of function is being called. So the count pairs of sum and the integer sum is given as uh, the argument to the function and then the COH statement prints the return value. So we have the count pairs function now it takes the in sum as integer no the argument and then prints the uh, pairs that we find and uh, also returns the count of the total number of pairs. Okay, so let us start with the first case. So the first condition that we are going to check is whether the sum is valid. So what do I mean by that? If the sum let us say is greater than 12, as we saw it is not possible because the maximum value itself is 12, 6 plus 6 would give us 12. So a sum that is greater than 12 is not possible, that is the one condition. This is the maximum value, then what is the minimum value? The minimum value would be the minimum value in each of these dice, which is 1 in each case. So 1 plus 1 give us 2. So the minimum value of the sum is 2. And if we get the sum as let us say 1, that is not at all possible. So the condition that we are going to check is if sum is less than 2 or if sum is greater than 12. In both these cases, the sum is invalid and hence we will not get any pass. So we are returning the value of minus 1. But if the sum existed, then we will find the pass, print the pass as well as the count. So we need to print the count, hence we will have a count variable. So in count is equal to 0. We have initialized the count variable. So after that, what do we do? We write a for loop which goes from 1 to 6 and then just using the single for loop, we will find those pairs which are up to the given sum. 
So let us move on to the for loop. So for int i is equal to 1 because the i contains values right from 1 to 6 and we are moving up to i is less than or equal to 6. 6 is also included and we are incrementing the value of 1, 1 by 1. So it is incremented by 1 in each case. Okay. So what is the condition that we are going to give inside that gives us these pairs? So the condition is if sum minus i, we have the sum and we are iterating from i is equal to 1 to 6. So if the sum minus i value is you know less than 6 and greater than 0, what does it mean? If it is less than 6 and it is greater than 0, it means it is a valid possibility in a die. The valid possibilities in a die are 1 to 6. So sum minus i, that means in this case, let us say 10, we saw the example as 10. So 10 minus 1. So 10 minus 1 is 9. Is it a valid you know, number in a die? No. So we'll move on to the next iteration. i is equal to 2. 10 minus 2 is 8. Is it a valid number in a die? No. Next iteration. 10 minus 3, 7. No. Next iteration. 10 minus 4, 6. 6 is a valid number in a die. 6 is included in the dice, right? Hence, in that case, we'll increment the value of count. And we'll also print the value of i and sum minus i. So these two are the pairs. So 4 and 6. So these two will give us one pair that added up to 10. Similarly, we'll move on to 5. So i is equal to 5. Sum minus i will also be 5. If we add it up to 10, so if they, you know, they add up to 10 and hence the count value will be incremented and we'll print the value as 5 comma 5. Similarly, we'll move on to 6, 6 and 4 will be printed. So in this case, we are using just a single for loop and we are printing all the possibilities which add up to 10 and also finding the count value. So let us code it. So sum minus y as we saw should be less than or equal to 6 at the same time. It should also be an sum minus i should be greater than 0. So these both conditions tell us what the value of sum minus i should be. So sum minus i would give us the another number that is present in a die that is possible a valid possibility in a die. So if this condition is true then we are incrementing the value of count. Now let's print these pairs. So see out. They are printing i and then let's leave some space so space and then we are printing the another number that we found that is sum minus i and then end it so we are printing the space so after this for loop we'll be returning the value of count and that's it let us check our output as we saw the value of sum here is 6 but let us change it to 10 because we have already solved it and we know the count as 3 and the pairs are 4, 6, 5, 5 and 6, 4. We'll also check for 6 but we, as we know the output earlier, we'll just stick with 10 now. So as we saw, 4, 6, 5, 5 and 6, 4, we have the outputs. So if you want, we can also check for the value of sum is equal to 6. So sum is equal to 6. And if we run this code, we'll get I think 5 possibilities. So 1, 5, 2, 4, 3, 3, 4, 2 and 5, 1. So if we pass the number 12, that is the sum value, to the count pairs of function that we just completed, what would be the output? Let me know your answers in the comment section below. If you love this video, please drop a like and comment down below if you have any questions. And please don't forget to click the subscribe button. We'll see you in the next episode of Dale Dose. Until then, bye bye.